If you have worked with huge hierarchies in your games, for example for mobs or quests, where subclasses define field values, you know how much pain it is to change such hierarchies. Today, we are going to extract data from these classes, create centralized storage for them, inject data back and make changes to this data fast and easy. Let's take a look at example. We have some sort of a game with a few types of mobs. All of them are based on mob class, which has four fields. Health of this mob, amount of gold dropped on death, some kind of brief description of this mob, and whether they are passive by default or not. Bosses also contain information about the minimal level required for player to fight with them. These two classes, mob and boss, define a schema that later gets filled by concrete mobs in their own files. In Godot, it would look something like this. Here is a script which represents a base class. And here is an example of a specific mob called Goblin. Every mob is represented by a separate scene, and values of fields defined in the base class are assigned here using export variables. Now, let's say that we revoked a damage mechanic in our game. And this means that health of every mob has to be changed. We have to get through every scene and change data inside of them one by one. On a big scale, it's a very daunting task. You can imagine how fun it was for me to change a scoring system in my game Digiload Inc. To do that, I had to get through somewhere around 70 files. But what's even worse about this whole approach is that it's clearly an error-prone one. All it takes is for you to miss a single file. And this is not some sort of a niche problem, it applies to a lot of systems in games, which use a similar class structure. Items, effects, quests, weapons, all of these things are prone to this problem. So, let's figure out a way to fix it. In its core, this problem comes from the fact that parts of our data are stored in many different scene files. To solve it, we have to simply extract all the data from scene files into one centralized storage, and then inject it back when objects get initialized. Thinking of a solution for such a storage, I came up with two main ideas, JSON and CSV. Both of them have its own pros and cons, and I wasn't able to stop on one of these two. So this tutorial is going to cover a solution based on JSON, and a bit later a second video will be published covering an approach based on CSV tables. With that being said, let's get into pros and cons of storing data in JSON. Pros. It's easy to work with JSONs in Godot. It literally takes one function call. JSON is supported in all of the programming languages, so you can programmatically edit and test it easily. JSON supports basic typization. Objects inside of it are named, so you can use these names in your code to extract data for a specific class. Cons. Cognitive complexity of reading it manually is a bit high, so you might lose track of your changes. Coming from the last point, JSON is long list in its nature, and editing it manually is more difficult than editing a table. To sum it all up, JSON is perfect for storing and automatic processing of data. You can edit it in Python or any other language with a simple script as this, and then import it in Godot with a single line of code. But it's not as perfect for manual data processing. Yet, there are a lot of tools that would help you work with it, and even without them, it's still much better than editing a few dozens of files but it's still not as good as working with CSV tables. So, I'd recommend to take a look at other solutions if you prefer to edit most of your data by hand. Now, into the action. First of all, we need to move definitions of our mobs into JSON. All it takes is to define some sort of a name for this mob, which we are going to use later as a key for a dictionary. After that, we copy every field from export variables here. This process is repeated for every mob created to this moment. Later, we are going to just define new objects here to describe newly created mobs. We also want to define an object name default, to use data from it in cases when other object doesn't have a definition of a field, thus leaving it to be filled with default value. Reading files from hard drive isn't the fastest thing in the world, that's why we better load our JSON file into a game once. And GDScript doesn't support static fields. Because of that, we need to define a global variable, previously known as singleton. The process of creating global variables in Godot is straightforward. You create a script, open project settings, go to afterload and choose script you want to be global. Inside of this script, we now can define a variable called movemodel and define it as passjson with the pass of our JSON file as an argument. We also want to add a function here, which will return a field value by mob and field names. 
This piece of code is necessary to be able to use default values. We will return a value from the object with specified mob name, if it's present, otherwise we will return a default one. Next, we need to link a mob scene with corresponding JSON object. To do so, we go to base class, remove all of the export keywords and add a new variable, which is now the only exported one, and stores a name of JSON object corresponding to this specific type of mob. The last thing to do is to create a variable called model and assign a JSON object to it. Now you can either use this model on its own as a storage of data for mob, in that case don't forget to duplicate it, or you can assign values stored in model to those variables that you had previously. It would take a few more lines of boilerplate code, which might lead to errors, but would allow you to use after complete for your variables. Whatever you choose, it's important to keep variables that stores model in both cases, because you may want to extract some class specific data from it later in your class hierarchy. In the example, there is a boss class, which has its own variable. With this model, I can easily get access to this data too. So, now I just need to specify a name of a mob in its scene, and that's it. Well, almost it. One last thing, don't forget to call .ready at the start of your script, to apply the code we've written in the base class. And that's it with JDScript version of this code, but that's not all I have for you today. I've also implemented this concept in c -sharp for those who prefer to JDScript. And I even have an opinion that c -sharp version is much cleaner and easier to understand. Let's take a look at it. First difference is that we don't need a separate script to act like a global variable. Thanks to ability to use static fields, we can load JSON files straight from the mob class. There is also for some reason no parse JSON function here, but this is a big deal because we can easily replace it using JSON class. Because C# is statically typed, we have to cast data to write types every time you access this dictionary. That's why I'd encourage you to extract data into separate fields this time. The last and the most important thing, in my opinion, is that when you override any method in C# most IDs will automatically generate a call to base method for you. So you don't need to write something like dot ready from the JDScript example every time on your own. This thing is generated for you automatically. Isn't it cool? That easy, the sharp version of this solution is done and we can scale it to whatever size we need. I hope that this video was helpful for you. In the next one, we are going to talk about these three tables and ways of implementing the same concept using it. It'll be a bit more complicated, but really good for manual data management. All the code shown in this video is available at GitHub, you can find link to it in the description, same as with some other helpful links and my socials, where I post a bit more about the projects I'm working on. I really want to know your opinion on this video, so leave comments down below, consider subscribing and ring the bell to not miss the second part. But for now, thanks for watching, see you next time, stay safe, have a good day and bye.